So now that the dust has settled on Resident Evil 4 Remake and a little bit of that recency bias has worn off, I think it's finally time to talk about some of the positives and negatives of this game. I actually played it three times before reviewing it, so I now feel confident enough about my grasp of the mechanics and the general game feel to give it the proper criticism without rushing out an opinion this time. I'd say the short version of this review is that the game is good, honestly you could probably argue it's even great, but at the end of the day, Resident Evil 4 didn't need a reimagining. It really didn't, unless you're one of those Zoomers who feels every game has to have realistic graphics to be playable. But on the other hand, for all the people who were Doom posting up until release, I can confidently say that it's not all bad. I'd argue that quite a few things were actually improved over the original, even if the core gameplay experience is not quite as fun. So I would recommend checking out the game and playing it for yourself, at the very least on sale. Though given that this review is going to come out nearly two weeks after the game's release, I'm sure most of you have already come to a conclusion and purchased it and played through it at least once. So you're just here to hear my opinion on it. But before we talk about the gameplay, which as you know I always start with, I do want to briefly talk about monetization. Capcom seems to be starting to fall into their old ways, the late PS3 Dark Age, where they were exploiting the shit out of everyone with some of the worst DLC practices we'd seen at the time, and they seem to be doing that again. This game has a lot of day one DLC. Some of this stuff none of you will care about, but honestly it does matter. Especially since in the case of the extra treasures, it fundamentally makes the game easier by giving you access to a lot more money and a few more extra charms for your case. And also, they locked away the original soundtrack, just like with Resident Evil 2 Remake, and this new game soundtrack is vastly inferior. You're probably not even going to notice it, except the very few times where it plays a light motif from one of the original tracks. I uh, heard infiltration for a second there. It's another generic cinematic action soundtrack where it's completely muted 95% of the time and then the other 5%. It feels almost ashamed to actually have a proper background track like old games used to have all the time. On top of this, there's also two exclusive weapons to DLC, which thankfully don't seem to be objectively superior to the base game weapons. And of course, some exclusive costumes and screen filters. And again, I don't care if you don't care about any of this. It was clearly cut from the game. It's day one DLC. And then of course, we have the general lack of content from this game, like the exclusion of Mercenaries mode, which is coming next week. So some of you are gonna say it's not a big deal, but this is entirely intentional because it's a basically minor version of a games as a service model. Because it's not a proper online game, in most cases, everybody's gonna stop playing a single player game about a week after release. And so, they add these additional quote unquote free content so that they can lead you into the in-game store and purchase extra stuff. Now, I have no idea if this Mercenaries mode will have store content, and maybe it doesn't. But the point is, they want to artificially increase the lifespan of a single player game by adding in little bits of free content and then selling you actual DLC later. Speaking of which, Separate Ways is not in the game and will very likely be paid DLC. I would bet at least 20 bucks that's going to be the case. And to no surprise, Assignment Ada is also not in the game, but I don't think anyone's really missing it. There's also fewer unlockables in the bonus content shop than previous RE Engine titles. That was one of the very few things that the Resident Evil 3 remake did well, was give you a reason to play the game again by having a bunch of game-breaking items in its shop like defense coins, or unlimited ammo weapons, or less tight dodge timings. All this game has is a few bonus weapons and a bunch of cosmetics that most people probably won't care about outside of the classic pinstripe suit and the Ashley armor which thankfully still functions the same way. I also want to point out that despite the fact that this game takes place in 2004, two of the unlockable cosmetics are N95 masks. 
Yeah, that's totally not already dated, Capcom. I mean, really? At what point does this start counting as a fetish? And of course, for the PC players out there, this game has de nouveau DRM, like many other modern games, which is going to make playing this on a lower end PC much more demanding. So really, the only things in favor of this game in terms of content is that it's probably the second longest Resident Evil campaign in the series history, at somewhere around 15 hours for a first playthrough, or possibly even more if you're playing on hardcore. And in terms of the replayability, some of the achievements have very specific requirements for certain sections of the game, so I guess that's a reason to come back if you're a completionist. The whole point of this segment is just to say you should probably just get this game on sale, especially if you want all the content. I'm sure there will be some kind of Game of the Year edition that will have all the things that this game should have had at launch. Alright, now let's finally get to the meat and potatoes of every video game, that being the gameplay experience. This is probably the element of the game I'm the most conflicted on, because some things were greatly improved, a lot of other things were not. And a few things I would say are massive downgrades. So let's just get into the gunplay first and foremost. The first thing you're gonna notice is that only three guns in the game can have a laser sight on them. The Silver Ghost starting handgun, the Punisher, and the Killer 7 which comes with one. This makes shooting much more difficult because it has the same focus mechanic that the Resident Evil 2 remake has, where you have to aim in one spot for a few seconds for your reticle to tighten and become accurate. This can be incredibly frustrating sometimes, especially if you're a fan of the Red 9, because it's much less accurate in this game, and although the stock does make it focus faster, random spread is just a bad fucking mechanic. I despise it, and it is so common in third-person shooters. I don't know why anyone likes this shit, especially since Resident Evil 4 is an action game. It's not a survival horror game. You're shooting constantly. The limitation on laser sights only causes annoyance. You could argue it was to better balance the handguns, but the Silver Ghost is already surprisingly good because it has a super high crit chance from its exclusive upgrade, and the Red 9 and Black Tail's damage has been nerfed a bit. So if you want a satisfying gunplay experience, you might as well just stick with the starting gun, or get the Punisher if you think people are going to line up enough to get those penetration shots. Now, as for the other guns, it doesn't tear me up too much that they don't have laser sights. A shotgun doesn't need a laser sight, obviously, and shotguns have actually been buffed in this game. I was surprised by that. I think basically every other gun type was nerfed in some way, but shotguns seem to be a pretty reliable one-hit kill on basic ganados as long as it's at point-blank range, which is definitely a good thing. I can compliment that. Now, of course, the trade-off being that ammo is much more rare on higher difficulties for anything other than the handguns. You actually have to craft the majority of your shotgun, rifle, and magnum ammo. And the crafting is something else I could complain about. It's just not fun. You have to pause even more than you normally would. It's weird because now you can actually quick swap between guns, which obviously is standard for pretty much every shooter, so I'm not going to really compliment it too much, but in the original game, you did have to pause to switch weapons. And thankfully, in this version, you can still pause to switch weapons, which can be very helpful. But now that you have to craft ammo, you're pausing just as much as you would in the original Resident Evil 4. As for the rifles, I would say this is somewhat of a side grade. On the one hand, your aim is much more unsteady than the original, to the point where I missed a shit ton of shots in the beginning of the game because there's no hold your breath mechanic to stabilize the scope sway. But on the other hand, you can now detach your scope and aim with iron sights, which is super useful at close range. I was actually using this stingray quite a lot at close ranges. On the other hand, headshots are no longer a guaranteed kill on basic enemies, which is Honestly, just a horrible fucking decision. What were they thinking, man? Another interesting element is that the mine thrower has been replaced with the bolt thrower, which is a silenced crossbow that you can combine the bolts with a mine head to turn them into mines, right? And it functions the same way that the mine thrower did. As for the bolts, they're effectively unlimited ammo as long as you don't turn them into a mine. You can pick up all the bolts you fired again. The only problem is the gun is cartoonishly weak. 
it basically does the same amount of damage as any of the handguns. So really, it's only useful for the mine gimmick, and the mines are surprisingly strong. Someone found out you can kill the big cheese in one second with some well-placed mines. As for the magnums, I think they feel fine. Obviously, the broken butterfly takes a long time to stabilize the aim, but you're mainly just going to be using it on bosses, so it doesn't really matter. Killer 7 feels great since it's got the laser sight. As for the submachine guns, this category has been slightly expanded. We now have an MP5, which you get pretty late in the game, but as you might expect, is pretty much just better than the TMP. And also for the rifle category, we now have an M4, the CQB rifle that was in Resident Evil 3 Remake. And honestly, I don't see the point of this thing. You're gonna already be guzzling through rifle ammo with the Stingray, and now you're on full auto, you're gonna have to be crafting constantly. Now as for the knife, this is probably the biggest gameplay upgrade in the game. This is probably why so many people think this is actually better than the original. I certainly don't think it's enough to actually make it more fun than the OG RE4, but I have to admit I love it and I do wish it was in the original. Essentially, the knife is now way more useful than it ever was in the original game, with the only downside being it now has durability and you have to repair it if it breaks. What the knife can do now that is so important is parry an extremely wide variety of attacks from both basic enemies and bosses, with the only exceptions being grab attacks and certain attacks that have to be dodged with a QTE. But as for all the parryable attacks, there's now a perfect parry system where if you trigger it right as you're about to get hit, you get a free follow-up attack on enemies, and you can also choose, instead of doing a melee, to use up some of your knife's durability to instantly kill them by stabbing them in the neck. When you get grabbed, you can also now stab an enemy to take minimal damage from the grab. That's a good trade-off. And also, much like you could shoot flying axes or crossbow bolts out of the air in the original, you can also now deflect them with the knife, which is much easier. And by contrast, it's usually more difficult to shoot flying objects out of the air, especially dynamite, which is hurled flying sky high above your vision. And so it's nearly impossible to actually shoot it once it's been thrown, which I would certainly count as a downgrade. Listen, a lot of people are jerking off this game for being much more difficult than the original, which it definitely is. And this is the part where I tell you that I played this game on hardcore mode for my first playthrough. And let me just tell you, I was absolutely baited. A lot of the people who are giving this game a negative review were also baited into playing hardcore because Capcom tells you this is for people who played the original. And I played the original like eight fucking times. So I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll pick hardcore. Normal's probably too easy. No, hardcore is not fucking balanced. And not because it's too hard. Honestly, the level of challenge is fine. What isn't fine is enemies are fucking bullet sponges. They changed how stunning enemies works. In the original, you could stun any basic Ganado with the weakest handgun shot in the game, including one bullet from the TMP. Now, in the remake, stun values are based on damage. And so, for like the first five hours of hardcore mode, it takes at least two, usually three shots, just to stop an enemy. Often enemies will literally ignore a fucking shot to the face if they're trying to grab attack you. And grabs, contrary to the little demo gameplay slices you've probably seen before, you can't actually dodge out of them. The end of the animation will still get you. So you're clearly supposed to shoot them to stop them, and it just doesn't work sometimes. And you can't parry a grab either. And to make matters worse, this is not connected to difficulty, but it's just a general problem with this game. The controls are fucking dog shit. End of story. There is no argument you can make otherwise. This game feels like absolute ass. Leon is way too slow. He turns like he's fucking wading through waist-high water. It is so slow, not to mention there's some kind of weird input lag while you're sprinting, where you can't pull out your knife for like half a second, and I'm not entirely sure what causes it. And look, I already know what some of you are gonna say. Oh, just don't sprint when you're in combat. Well, Leon is a fucking slug, dude. You're gonna wanna be sprinting as much as possible, even as slow as the sprint is. 
walking is ungodly slow, and positioning is a very important part of this combat system. Even though you can parry so many different attacks that sometimes just standing still and waiting for shit to happen is a good idea, honestly. These enemies are definitely smarter than the original in the sense that they will flank you and you can't parry something you can't see. So you're gonna be doing a lot of running around, and running around just doesn't feel good. Because they straight up ported the RE2 remake controls, they don't work for an action game. They're fine for a survival horror game, absolutely fine. Action game? Fuck no. That's probably my single biggest problem with the gameplay, is the basic movement controls. It's crazy how tank controls in the original were ten times more responsive than this shit. Now as for my other gameplay complaints, these are a little bit more on the minor side, though I think it is important that it's much more difficult to trigger follow-up attacks in this game, even when you do stun an enemy, actually kneecapping them to roundhouse kick them or suplex them is much more difficult. It seems to be completely random whether or not an enemy is stunned in the correct way, and I guess Capcom didn't really like you spamming these cool action moves over and over again, but I loved it personally. I never saw a single problem with it. And then another issue is that Ashley is actually way more of a pain in the ass than she ever was in the original. Instead of telling her to wait and follow you, you instead tell her to either stay close or stay far away. The problem is, there's no reason to ever have her stay far away from you. All it does is get her grabbed over and over and over again. And sometimes, even when she is sticking close to you, she'll randomly stop and let an enemy pick her up for no fucking reason. And now it takes two handgun rounds to stun the enemy carrying her, and this on top of the fact that the Red 9 doesn't have a laser sight means that you're gonna fucking panic and miss a bunch of shots. It's such a pain in the ass. The only upside is now you can use your knife to instantly kill an enemy who's carrying her. It took me a while to figure that out. So that could actually ironically be useful if you let her get picked up on purpose. But still, I swear they dumbed down her AI even further, and for some reason, randomly, she will swap between following you closely or far away, and trust me, I never hit control because there's no reason to ever hit control. But on the bright side of things, instead of her having a health bar, now if she gets hit by something, she's downed for a while, and you can either pick her back up or she'll pick herself up. And enemies don't hit her on purpose when she's on the ground, so usually it's going to be you killing her, or she's not going to die at all, thankfully. But it is a pain in the ass to take care of her overall in this version. Whereas in the original, you could figure out clever ways to make it not a problem. Now look, I realize it sounds like that I'm shitting all over this remake's core gameplay experience, and I do think quite a few elements are downgrades, particularly the shooting. I just don't think super armor is a good mechanic, generally, at least for basic enemies. But honestly, the knife mechanic kind of outweighs a lot of these problems. I think parrying attacks feels really fucking good, especially when it's a perfect parry. But I would still overall say that this is a bit of a downgrade from the original. Yes, it's much more difficult, and generally, games that are too easy are not very engaging. But Resident Evil 4, the original anyway, was straight up a power fantasy. You feel good because of how powerful you are as you got better at the game. And yeah, the skill ceiling wasn't super high, obviously, and the game wasn't really that demanding outside of a few moments. But this new version, you just feel so much weaker. Guns do less damage with the exception of the shotgun and the magnum. But even in those guns cases, ammo is so much more rare that you still end up feeling weaker anyway because you want to save your shotgun and magnum. You're shooting with your handguns the vast majority of the time, and they have undoubtedly been nerfed. The most powerful you ever feel is when you just get some lucky Silver Ghost headshots with the exclusive upgrade. And even though the Red 9 with its exclusive stuns enemies pretty reliably given it does so much damage, it still doesn't quite feel right just because of how hard it is to trigger follow-up attacks because of this bullshit RNG that they added. So obviously it does come down to personal preference whether or not you like power fantasies or you like being challenged. 
I have no problem with being challenged, but I gotta admit, maybe it's just because I'm 27 and video games just aren't as entertaining as they used to be, but I'd say making a game hard for the sake of being hard just doesn't really do it for me anymore. I would rather a game prioritize being as fun as possible in its core mechanics, and then challenge can come afterward. Now as for the enemies and the level design and all that shit, I would honestly say in total this is a side grade, which is not a bad thing given that Resident Evil 4 already did this pretty well. As for the enemy variety, the vast majority of the enemies are returning enemies and have a lot of the same returning attacks, except you'll notice on hardcore and especially professional difficulty enemies are much more aggressive than the original game. You'll notice there is a new enemy type, a bullheaded guy with a giant hammer, or sometimes he attacks you unarmed, and a third variant that appears in the island replaces the minigun guy with a version that has an automatic crossbow that shoots flaming bolts. I'd like to think this is a reference to Berserk, but it could be just a coincidence. The red cultist Ganados also have a new function, that being they can now explode normal Ganados heads popping a Plagus out which can either make an encounter much more difficult, or if you have a flash grenade ready, much easier. And Regenerators have been overhauled to be much more dangerous in this version, which is definitely a good thing. They actually sprint after you now, and although you can parry their attacks and straight up slice off their arms, which removes a little bit of the horror factor, I've gotta admit, it's also much harder to hit the Plagueis inside them now. And instead of the Iron Maiden being a completely separate enemy type, Regenerators can now morph into them, and you have to shoot them in the head over and over again with the Plagueis having much more health than the normal ones. So Regenerators have definitely been upgraded. So all in all, I'd say the enemy variety is quite good, just like the original. I don't really have any complaints here. I'd say it's a slight upgrade overall. Now as for the boss fights, this is another thing I'd say was actually upgraded. Though a few of the fights I'd argue were downgraded. I'd say overall these were definitely improvements. The most notable ones being to the Krauser fights, which are now completely centered around the knife parry mechanic, which is really cool. And in the original, the first Krauser fight was a quick time event cutscene, so obviously a real fight is a major upgrade over that. And as we'll get into more later, Krauser in general has just been an upgrade over the original in every way. Salazar's fight has also been changed completely and made much, much more difficult, but also is probably the most frustrating boss battle in the game because he lays around these explosive mines all over the arena, and I swear, sometimes they just randomly spawn. And they stun you for a few seconds, which can get you in range of his instant kill attack, which led to quite a few frustrating deaths on professional difficulty. That said, the original was brain dead easy once you knew what to do, so I'd say this is still an upgrade. The only boss fights I didn't really like were the Verdugo fight, which was very similar to the original, but somehow even more annoying just because of the shitty controls, and also, sometimes Verdugo would not walk into the nitrogen sprays, and he just has too much health. There's no reason not to just skip him if you're trying to speedrun the game for the higher ranks. And I also don't really like this game's version of the Double Gigante fight because they made it scripted. You can't just drop them into the lava at any time anymore. You have to drop the unarmored one first and only when he's stunned, because otherwise the Gigantes is smart enough to quickly back off of the hatch. And then once you take the unarmored one down, Luis has to use dynamite to free the Plagueis from the second one. And so, I don't know, it's just kind of lame. It's much more engaging when you just shoot them and kill them. They kind of ruined this one. Even if you shoot them to death, you still have to shoot the unarmored one first. So it took away what little player choice you had here. Still, overall, bosses were definitely an upgrade. Now as for the level design, this is what I would say is definitely a downgrade. Because the game is somehow more linear than the original game. Now it has its moments where it's the opposite, particularly after you beat Del Lago in the village, in which case the game becomes a mini sandbox for the next chapter, which I actually really liked. But in the case of the castle and island, the very few moments where an area would have multiple paths, they now have eliminated the optional path and just made it completely linear, which is very weird. What's wrong with just having a couple different paths that lead to the same destination? Why would they even lock them off? 
Also, in a lot of cases, the areas themselves are just smaller. Even when something was obviously just a hallway in the original game, at least it was kind of a wide hallway. Now, these hallways are even tighter hallways, which I realize people are just going to think is a nitpick and not give a shit about. But it was just something nagging the back of my head that I noticed over and over again. A much bigger issue is that the castle has been completely overhauled. Even though the village has a lot of the same areas and definitely felt in the spirit of the original, I guess Capcom didn't really like their design for the castle, maybe it felt too unrealistic to them or something, because now it's basically unrecognizable outside of a handful of encounters that were obviously ripped from the original, like the hedge maze or the flaming catapults at the beginning, or the room you get sealed in with the night Plagueis. But almost everything else is gone, and a lot of stuff has been cut. Especially anything that was too weird or outlandish, like the spike trap room, or the fire-breathing statue lava room, which I love that room, I fucking knew they were gonna cut it because it was too weird and too out of place. They also cut out the first encounter with the Novista doors in the castle sewer system, whatever it was supposed to be. Now they just show up unceremoniously in the big room that originally had a huge hive that you had to shoot down. Now there's no hive and it's just a room full of them. They also cut out the sequence with the giant statue trying to crush you, which is not really a surprise to anyone. What is a surprise is the statue makes a comeback in the tower that was directly after that sequence in the original game, and it breathes fire at you. The thing is, even though they cut out all this weird stuff, they still kept in the minecart ride and actually greatly expanded it, and actually made it better than the original, so... I have no idea why they made these decisions really, because it's not like Resident Evil 4 is a realistic game, it definitely isn't. It's not a serious game, it's not a scary game, and even though the remake attempts to make it look scarier, it's still not scary in the least. And the only thing that has replaced all of these cut castle sequences is one where an armored gigante throws rocks at you, which I did like, I definitely liked it, but it's not the same. It's just weird because the castle feels shorter, but in terms of actual time spent in it, it's probably actually longer than the original just because of how much slower paced this game is. I don't know, it just feels like a lot of things were changed just to really sell this as a reimagining. And don't get me wrong, it feels like one. This absolutely doesn't replace the original RE4 in any way, but at the end of the day, it still is a remake and not a fully new game, right? The island also has a bunch of stuff cut as well, like the laser room and the super long bulldozer segment. Again, not really a surprise in either case, but they also didn't add any sequences to replace this at all. And they also cut out the U3 boss, or you may know him as IT. Since you're here, why don't I introduce you to IT? IT should keep you busy. Can't remember the name, huh? A senior moment, perhaps. He's nowhere to be seen in this game, despite the fact they remade every other boss encounter. But at the same time, they did expand the wrecking ball part and make it actually make sense. In which case, in the original, it was just a random fucking room. And in this version, it's much more engaging. It's a huge battle arena. You gotta protect Ashley and also fight a bunch of different enemy types. I don't know. You get the idea here that I'm very conflicted about this stuff. It's not like it's a huge downgrade, even though it does bother me that they changed so much about the castle. Because there are things in this game that are definitely improved. I'm trying to tell you, this is absolutely not in any way the type of game where I talk shit the whole time and then I say it's decent at the end. I do think it's good, but it's hard to focus on the good things, because I keep just thinking about all this shit that they cut or changed, and I just end up wondering why they did it, you know? Some of the stuff makes sense, because it's too weird or too out of place, but honestly, that campy crazy shit is a big part of why I loved Resident Evil 4 in the first place. So, like I said, enemies, bosses, level design, I think it just ends up coming down to a side grade when you add it all up. Now onto a subject that is undoubtedly a downgrade, the story and the characters. I just knew, as soon as this remake was announced, that this would be the element of the game they butchered the most, and on purpose, no less. 
On the one hand, I would say it's not as bad as I thought it would be, as Leon is still vaguely similar to his representation in the original. He's definitely too emo and too serious. But strangely enough, he actually does have a lot of quips. Unfortunately, a lot of them are Marvel-tier cringy ones, not 80s-tier actually charming and somewhat hilarious at times. Nighty-night, knights. Now, obviously, that's completely subjective. Do I even have to say it, really? But I still think the writing is definitely a downgrade from the original in that case. Keep your dogs on a leash, people. Keep your dogs on a leash. That's it. That's not too bad. Now, obviously, the story as a whole being changed doesn't matter that much, but the most significant ones are that Luis now lives quite a bit longer, has much more involvement in the story, and helps out Leon an extra time before he's killed, and he's killed by Krauser instead of Sadler. Speaking of which, Sadler may be the biggest downgrade of all, not including Ada's voice, which we'll get to in a moment. But for those of you who haven't played the original, Sadler was not a generic cult leader who believed in some nebulous idea of a god. That is so goddamn generic. How many times have we seen that? No, Sadler was much more like a Bond villain. He was egotistical and power-hungry, wanted to take over the world, which obviously is pretty generic, but he also always kept his cool and was just as smug as Leon was, which is why they had so many great interactions. And speaking of interactions, Sadler has barely any with Leon in this one. He doesn't even show up in person until the third act. Whereas in the original, Leon has a confrontation with him as soon as he rescues Ashley in the village. Instead, in the remake, he just telepathically communicates with anybody who's been infected with the parasite. Which would be okay, except it's completely one-sided. Leon never actually talks back to Sadler, right? And speaking of talking back, there aren't nearly as many roasts in this game. A lot of the random Leon one-liners are during gameplay after certain segments, or at the beginning of a boss fight, which isn't completely terrible, but when you're actually trying to play the game, sometimes you might miss a line, or it doesn't quite hit as heavy as if you were watching a cutscene, because then the delivery and the cinematography kind of work off of each other, you know what I mean? Even when a lot of the best quips were during these radio calls, it was still characters being face-to-face -face so you could see their emotional reaction to the lines, right? When it's during gameplay, it's not the same. Which is kind of weird because if you know me, you know I don't like cutscenes generally, and I'd say the remake probably does have less cutscenes overall than the original. But I love pretty much every cutscene in Resident Evil 4, so I usually make an exception because every single one is entertaining. There's no problem with having a lot of cutscenes as long as they're entertaining. That's why I like the Metal Gear games. If they didn't have that quirky Japanese charm and Kojima's general west ness which has him emulate Hollywood movies, then the cutscenes would be boring, modern Sony slop. And then I would hate the games because they would waste your fucking time, even though the gameplay is good in Metal Gear games as well. So really, maybe not the best example. I guess what I'm trying to say is, video game cutscenes are a lost art. Resident Evil 4 remakes are generally pretty good. There certainly were a few moments that felt like an action movie, and I appreciated those. But overall, the campiness has been very toned down here. Then we have the Ada Wong problem. She's fucking horrible. And yes, I've seen the recent news of her voice actress being bullied off the internet, which of course, there's never any evidence for this, just like there's never any evidence for death threats either that people present, so I'm gonna choose not to believe it until I see some proof, as everyone should. But even if she was quote-unquote bullied off the internet, well, yeah, she probably doesn't deserve it. This is Capcom's fault for wanting an actual Asian actress to voice Ada, even though all the previous voices were great. And this woman just doesn't know how to voice act. I can't believe the voice director just let this shit go through, man. She's like straight up reading the lines. The deal was, we get you out of here when you deliver the amber. No amber, no protection, Luis. Would it make me use this? Would you? Well, after six years, that is one hell of a greeting, Ada. You don't seem surprised. 
Nothing personal, Leon. Luis and I had an arrangement. Don't worry, I'll take good care of it. And as for Ada's character, she's even more of a bitch in the red dress than she was in the original. It's pretty obnoxious, actually. And of course, I can't forget to mention Salazar, who looks like he's about to join the next drag queen story hour. And on top of his butchered appearance, he also has far, far fewer interactions with Leon over the course of the castle. And just like I mentioned in the last video, all gendered lines have been cut out of the game. No ballistics, no women, no bitch in the red dress, even the female Ganada with a pitchfork through her head has been cut out. This is undoubtedly censorship, and I'm glad that's as far as the wokeness goes, but making these changes in the name of inclusivity is still bad. Not nearly as bad as shit we've been exposed to in the past five years, but I'm still gonna point it out wherever I see it. So fortunately, it's not all bad. Believe it or not, I think they actually upgraded Ashley's character, despite much complaining on the internet about her appearance. I think the main upgrade is that she's now desperately thirsty for Leon's dick. Leon, there's some armor. Bet you could use it like a bulletproof vest. <laughs> Little old-fashioned for my taste. Mm, too bad. I think you'd look pretty dashing. She wants the dick, dude. She wants it. And I'd say just in general, a female character that is nice to you the entire time is a breath of fresh air. I swear to God, every video game feels like they gotta do the same thing movies are doing, where it's a strong, independent woman who shits on the man the whole time, so... The fact that Ashley is nothing like that is good. Now, if only she wasn't so annoying in gameplay. And like I said, I think Luis is a little bit of an upgrade. The only problem is Leon shits on him for almost no reason the whole time. And he dies saving Leon's ass from Krauser, so I thought that was a pretty good moment. And speaking of Krauser, he may have received the biggest upgrade of all. The only character change that felt 100% in the spirit of the original game. As now, in the remake, they play up Krauser and Leon's master-student relationship. Enough play, rookie. You haven't changed a damn bit. <laughs> what a disappointment. So goddamn weak! You're too soft to do what's necessary! That's the difference between you and me. Okay. And Krausler has that perfect, like, condescension toward Leon, especially if you get killed by him over and over again. What the hell were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> this is the new, uh, no map, is what the hell are you doing? <laughs> jerking off, obviously, jerking off constantly. And then finally, when you defeat his second form, the student has surpassed the master. Again, it's kind of generic, but it's the type of, like, feel-good, campy, 80s spirit that I loved about the original game. I just wish more of this game had that kind of energy. Now onto some of the more minor things. I already complained about the new inventory system in my last video, but the black outlines look horrible. The auto sort kind of defeats the original purpose of that inventory system. And the fact that the case only takes up like a third of the screen and the rest is a sort of translucent background of the gameplay. So it's not even a proper pause screen. You can still kind of see shit behind it. I don't like any of that. It's the same type of modern minimalistic UI that just feels completely soulless because I've seen it like a thousand times by now. Alright, I've been putting it off the whole video, but now it's finally time to talk about professional difficulty. This is actually the second time I'm recording this segment because I decided to play the game a third time before I release this video. Because I wanted to at least unlock some bonus content, and unfortunately, pretty much all of it is locked behind getting a high rank, which means finishing the game as fast as possible. Now, professional difficulty in this game is slightly similar to the original, but much more difficult, obviously. Just like the original, adaptive difficulty is turned off, and it's set to the maximum possible difficulty for hardcore, not standard, which is a pretty important distinction. On top of this, only perfect parries with the knife work, 
with the only exception to that rule being certain boss attacks like Mendez's claw swipes and Krause's first form's various different knife attacks can luckily still be parried normally. Which is such a massive change in gameplay, just when you think you're starting to get good at the game, then your get out of jail free card, the knife, is suddenly much less useful. Either that, or you gotta start memorizing all of the attacks, so you know exactly when to parry in a tiny window, and the only real player feedback here is a fraction of a second flash from the lower right corner of the screen where your knife indicator is. So there's certainly quite a bit of trial and error here, especially since some of the enemies attack so quickly with so little telegraphing like the Novista doors that you're probably just going to get hit unless you manage to shoot them first. Another issue is that there's no auto saves anymore. You can only load from a manual save. And this isn't so bad as long as you're not going for S+. S+, the ultimate ranking, you have to do from a fresh save with only 15 saves across the whole game, which might sound like a lot, but this game has a lot of very difficult segments. As someone who's beaten Dead Space 2 Hardcore mode twice, let me just tell you, this is much more difficult than that. The three saves in Dead Space 2, while highly punishing, that game is much easier than this. Now the reason I re-recorded this segment is because I went from completely hating professional difficulty because enemies are just way too aggressive and the perfect parry system makes the controls even more frustrating to now having more of a love-hate relationship because this difficulty forces you to get good at the mechanics. Once you finally get a handle on when to shoot, when to stand still, when to run, what attacks can be parried slash dodge slash you have to stagger the enemy out of them in the case of the grabs, the combat finally starts to fully click. Now I still gotta say there's definitely bullshit moments, particularly as you get further into the game. The second Krauser fight is infuriating just because of how long it is. So if you die in the final part, even if you remembered to save right before it, you have to redo the entire fight again, and it's bare minimum 5 minutes each time, closer to 10. Another annoying element is the fact that enemy aggression seems to be turned up alongside difficulty, and so it gets to the point where running past enemies to get a high rank is actually easier than just fighting them, which I really don't like because this is an action game. Avoiding enemies is basically the antithesis to this genre. Yeah, it fits for the survival horror entries in the series. I never had a problem speedrunning through Resident Evil 1 Remake, I've done it three or four times by now. But when you're forced to avoid the very reason you should be even playing this genre of video game, it really kind of ruins the experience. They should have taken a second look at this ranking system. I had no problem with the rankings in Resident Evil 5, which was based on accuracy, numbers of death, and time together. That would have worked perfectly for this game. Now that it just comes down to time, or in the case of S+, it has to be on a fresh save, number of saves, and also time, you're not even really fucking playing the game at that point, are you? So in conclusion, is the Resident Evil 4 remake a good remake? I would say mostly yes, in the sense that as a reimagining, it definitely stands on its own from the original. There's a lot changed here. Like I said, the castle is basically unrecognizable in its layout. And while a decent amount of areas and encounters were cut, at least some of the most memorable moments were recreated and expanded upon in some cases. I'd say the boss fights are mostly an upgrade, even though the U3 boss was cut. And I really like the knife parry mechanic, I would have liked that in the original RE4, though that game was easy enough as it was. I still think it's a really cool idea. But yeah, there's still a lot of problems with this remake. I'd say the biggest one in terms of the gameplay mechanics is just the controls. It controls like complete fucking ass, dude. I can't emphasize this enough. The RE2 remake controls do not work for an action game. Believe it or not, I have never had a problem with how Resident Evil game controlled until now. I was fine with the tank controls, even for the action games in the series. I think Resident Evil 4 and 5 control fine. I think Resident Evil 6, despite the fact you could do so many stupid moves like rolling around on the ground and stuff, I still think that game controls fine too. The first person RE games also control fine. 
Though admittedly the blocking was pretty overpowered so you didn't really need to maneuver around that much. But now with RE2, 3, and now 4 Remake, we have these sloppy, sluggish controls where it feels like Leon is maneuvering through fucking tar, which worked okay for RE2 Remake because you're just dodging slow-ass zombies most of the time. It was a survival horror experience, right? And with RE3 Remake, you had a completely busted dodge roll mechanic that made you completely invincible and also slowed down time. But then for RE4 Remake, there's no way to make these shitty controls feel better. Now look, I know it sounds like I'm shitting all over this game again. That's just the nature of my reviews, dude. I focus on the negative. But I still think this is a pretty fun game. In some ways, it is definitely a step down from the original. But this is the type of game that is going to appeal to people who like to master a game. Get as good as possible at a single player game for some fucking reason. You're not even competing against anyone. This is like Doom Eternal all over again. But seriously, I guess if you're more speedrunning inclined and you're willing to get used to the shitty sprinting, if you can even fucking call it sprinting. There's obviously a pretty decently high skill ceiling for this game and you can pull off some really cool moves. As I started getting better at the game on my third playthrough, I started to feel good too. But I've gotta say, with this vastly increased difficulty and frustrating controls and RNG follow-up attack system, why the hell would they make it RNG? I just realized that by making the game significantly more difficult, they also made it somewhat less fun. Now some people think a game being hard makes it fun. Well you're fucked in the head and need to stop playing video games for at least a year. For me, I don't really care about being challenged anymore, I'm gonna be honest. I was baited into playing this on hard mode, I'm not gonna fall for that shit ever again. I don't care how easy modern games are on normal, I have learned my lesson, I swear, this time. I know no one really cares to come to me for advice on video game development considering I obviously don't know what I'm talking about. My only experience is playing hundreds of video games, so if that doesn't really count for anything, whatever, I can't argue with you. But if there are any potential game developers listening, I would highly advise that you make your game as fun as possible first. A game actually needs to be satisfying to play before you can then crank the difficulty to a suitably challenging level. You don't design the difficulty of your game around the type of people who can beat it with a Dance Dance Revolution mat. I would also argue you shouldn't base it around playtesters who clearly have the level of skill of DSP. There's certainly a happy medium between those two things. But to try and end this tangent on a point, I just think Resident Evil 4 leaned a little bit too far toward making a game that had a high skill ceiling than actually making a fun game. I will play Resident Evil 4 the original for the rest of time because it is an incredibly fun experience, even if it's not so challenging. This game I probably won't play again anytime soon, if ever. I'll probably come back to play the DLC and that'll be the end of it because it's just not as fun to play. Challenging, yes, but the replayability is almost non-existent for various reasons. That would probably take another 10 minutes to explain. Maybe one of these days I'll make a gaming is dying on replayability. But to not end this video on a negative note, I will say it was fun. It was better than I thought it would be. It definitely wasn't as woke as I thought it would be, so that's good. But it is lacking a lot of content it probably should have had, and, you know, I've already complained about the rest. But Resident Evil 4 was good, but it wasn't good enough. Not as good as the original, but it's probably worth your time when it goes on sale. That's about it. See you next time, guys. You know, I could put in a word with my dad. Have you assigned to my detail, if you're interested? You don't need no way, fam.